the grace of God, Shalom TV has got one more opportunity to sit down with his beatitude, more and more Basilius Clemus Catholicos. He is a supreme head of the Syro Malankara Catholic Church, and he's also the vice president of the Catholic Bishops Council of India. We extend our heartfelt gratitude for the immense support and the apostolic blessings he has extended to uh, uh, the church in Kerala and to Shalom TV and also for all the apostolic blessings you've given till now. Soon after your ordination as a, as a bishop, you visited North America as an apostolic visitor. You have had an eyewitness of the early stages of the Cyril Malankara Catholic Church in this continent. Now, when you come back and visit us as our supreme head, what are the comments that you have when you see the church today? I was appointed Apostolic Visitator for North America and Europe by Holy Father Pope John Paul II to coordinate and to further suggest the possible ways and means of effectively making this community ecclesial and visibly present in this country. I came here in October 2001, of course, immediately after 9-11. And I tried to visit our people here. And of course, we could uh, purchase a house of our own in New York, Marivano Center in the Hillside Avenue. And we started our work little more effectively. And I was here till 2003 since I was appointed Bishop of Tiruvalla in September 2003, I had to go back to India and to resume my work over there as the Holy See decided. But for me, it was a little painful to leave this country because of the affection and the ecclesial relationship that I enjoyed here in this country. The children, the youth, and also in a way, uh, I had an association with the Jesus youth who used to come here in my basement for a monthly uh, prayerful, uh, I must say, gathering. Even from Virginia, people used to come for a one-hour prayer here uh, with us to see that the gospel is growing to lot of new situations. As I left Bishop Thomas Mar, Joseph Mar Thomas Tirimeni came in and of course the one who came after me was stronger, coordinating and finding out the possibilities of establishing our church here. And I must say he could find out certain young people who are bestowed with the call of the spirit to be to enter into the seminary life and it's very uh, promising fact that we have uh, four seminarians now uh, two are ordained deacons and uh, joseph tirimeni uh, he found out these young aspirants and he promoted uh, such a seminary system here in the exarchate the Holy See has graciously erected an exarchate for us in 2010 upon the request of the Holy Episcopal Synod of our Church. And I am very happy that our request has been positively granted, an exarchate was established and a bishop was appointed as exarch of USA, Canada and Europe. In the life of the Sura Malankara Catholic Church in America and Canada, especially in the Western continent, considering the fact that we follow an Antiochian liturgy, which may sound a bit complex to the, especially to the children growing up here or to the local population, in your vision, how can we help the local population with our Antiochian liturgy to open this door of faith and enter into communion with God. The Holy Father has uh, declared 
an year of faith that doesn't mean that only 2013 is the year for faith faith is for the whole life but a precise year is earmarked to make effective ways and means to strengthen the faith of the church i mean it means faith of the people yes tradition patrimony treasury of the church include many realities and factors one of the deciding factors of a church is its worshiping tradition as we call liturgy and i must say the syrian malangara catholic church has been fortunate enough to have one of the most ancient liturgies of the christendom the west syrian liturgy the anaphora of st james the brother of jesus our lord this is a great blessing on us and this has been used only by the non catholic or the orthodox brothers widely known since 1930 with the reunion of marivanius theremini to the holy catholic church the holy catholic church has added one more rich tradition to the treasury of the worshiping ethos of the whole church during the 8th suru manangara catholic convention we had in north america uh, there was a very vibrant discussion about how we will move or transition our liturgy from the malayalam language which we are used to into english and there was quite a vibrant discussion and at the end all of us were waiting keenly to listen to your comments on it and uh, you came up and offered your full support and blessings and uh, directions to uh, you know and you actually congratulated us to have because we are already moved into english language but the sentence that hit us the most was when you said that it's not the medium of communication that you are concerned about you said it's the language of faith that you are concerned about your beatitude could you please expand on that a little bit more the spirit urged me to say that mm-hmm. there need to be given till more attention to the language of faith that's why i asked is it because of the language that there is there we, we see a gap in the local english parishes they don't use malayalam they don't use arabic they don't use the other vernacular as we speak about they use only english mm-hmm. but still you can see a gap a vacuum in the local english speaking churches mm-hmm. therefore uh, that is not the language is not the ultimate reason for that what is the whole thing happening faith is lacking due to various reasons mm-hmm. that is to be addressed and also i am really honest in speaking the gap is not only found in the church mm-hmm. the same gap is seen vividly in the families if the gap you are finding it in the church go by can see where the room the chair and a space for your children mm-hmm. is it not the same this is the same gap you see at home that is reflected again in the church that's all those who are absent from the church they are really absent from the families as well in most of the cases i must say mm-hmm. so uh, as the second vatican council strongly teaches us you can find the miniature of the church in your family domestic church that is the word council fathers used the road starts from the domestic church to the parish church okay. the same people move from the family to the parish church and the same family returns from the parish church to the domestic church 
as you celebrate the holy mass in the church you assemble yourself in the family for the evening prayer the domestic church prays there and the family uh, the, the parish family celebrates the holy mass in the parish church that's the only difference therefore i mean to say the faith of language is crucial than the language of communication you adapt yourself to the need if you are in that southern part if you need to celebrate the mass in spanish do it don't prevent those people of receiving the grace of the holy eucharist by limiting themselves because of a language open up your your your, your mindset and be open to receive the grace of god also through them okay. but the language of faith is a determining factor what would be your practical suggestions to the parents in this continent to the faithful malangara catholics in this continent in helping them towards answering their children when the children says i hear something different here and i hear something different in school or in the community um in your vision um how would you like the malangara catholic parents to talk to their children and to answer their children the gospel of saint mark chapter 7 verses 8 we read like you disregard the commandments of god and cling to human tradition the gospel speaks very directly as we face challenges and situations what went wrong with our choice mm-hmm. what went wrong with our decision what motivated us to to do this or omitting that very clear from the gospel command as god's children and as christian families as who follow jesus christ not only on his miracles mm-hmm. not only on his passion not only on his resurrection but the fact that he sits at the right hand of the father who prepares a place for us and as he said you will be there where i am this is the final destination as he has said you are in the world but you don't belong to the world mm-hmm. the first part you cannot change you are living in the world but you don't belong to the world that means you are not the product of this world you are made human being according to the image and likeness of no president no rulers no system no ideology but of god and you have been given the life by god himself even when you are before you are born when you are in the womb of your mother i know you as the lord said are these not deciding factors for a responsible parent to decide which way to choose or are we not bound to hear the voice of the conscience which is the fruit of the guidance of the spirit or are you confining yourself to the mindset of the world to which you never belong to you are on which side you belong to whom this is a deciding question this each family parents must see where we belong to why we still keep the writing on the top of the bank currency in god we trust it should have been written on few churches no mm-hmm. or some divine places but 
in a matter in a in a stuff which you handle every minute as you touch this currency this reminds us in god we trust this is not a joke this is an axiom of the mindset of the people who thought of the generations the future of a big continent these are not momentary factors as we say jesus in the gospel of john chapter 10 verses 10 i have come that you may have life life in abundance sometimes we are confined to the one year two year five year 10 year or 30 years planning for the family mm-hmm. as we finish the mortgage we are safe that's why i extend it up to 30 years but that, that is not the end of life we are so much attached to the material arrangement of our well being but abundance of life doesn't limit yourself with this economic arrangement of your life something more than that abundant life gets its completion with god himself jesus reminds us in my father's house are plenty of rooms and i'm going to prepare a house for you and you will be there where i am this is the final destiny of of a follower and my planning my priority my calculations my situations arrangements everything must be uh, decided according to this final destiny of our earthly sojourn the situations are challenging in this country for a serious christian i am sure when attacks are made on family the foundations of a country is already at stake same sex marriage mm-hmm. abortion these are open direct challenges against the divine institution you have disregarded the commandments of god and cling to the human tradition as saint mark tells us the gospel tells us this is what is happening here and as any serious christian any believer in god anyone who believes in the conscience anyone who really believes to have moral values in this country must say these are against the divine institution as well as human dignity same sex marriage will never produce children if you don't have children what is all about the generations you cannot substitute a mother with a tube mother's womb is holier than any instrument made by human beings material growth secularized mindset can attack the conscience and that is what is happening here the question is can i be silent can you be silent on this issue one thing can be made be sure this is not the work of god any divine agencies the other part i leave it to your conscience to think for yourself who does it for many who would have migrated really early to this continent and um especially for the children growing up here we may have lost touch with the spiritual life of our founder servant of god marie van nispelava would you be able to explain in a few words his spiritual life Mari Vanius 
now a servant of god led a life of deep prayer and led a monastic life and as a bishop as a head of the malangara surian catholic church has been accepted as a model for genuine christian life of course due to various reasons the people who migrated to different parts of the world have forgotten many signs of course also marivanius since he lived only up to the 1953 the present generation the young generation could not see him personally but the literature and his living memory and his uh, uh, visions are uh, worded in writings books and so on uh, i must say efforts must be taken seriously to bring to the minds of our children this genuine christian model of mary vanius you had spearheaded the formation of an apostolate called suvishesha sangam which especially engages the lay faithful uh, to the work of spreading the gospel what inspired your beatitude to do so and what would be your comments on the lay faithful entering the field of spreading the gospel message what to me if i don't preach the gospel this is a challenge for all and as a church we must take the proclamation the evangelization the witnessing more seriously mm-hmm. mary venios the servant of god took this message very seriously he wanted to do mission work in the whole of india we are preparing a team of uh, members of the suvishesha sangha about 30 of them okay. uh, they are meeting once in 3 months and spending 3 days in prayer and fasting mm-hmm. and especially at the, the tomb of mary vanius the many in trivandrum mm-hmm. and getting ready for a, a genuine christian witnessing not that they go everywhere and preach literally the gospel mm-hmm. but these are this, this is the central team to inspire the other diocesan or the districts or the parish level uh, suvishesha sangham okay. uh, some sort of a core group like okay they will be officially sent as missionaries and and, and as i understand this message has been taken seriously by our lay people or mm-hmm. also by our religious and clergy that they are preparing themselves the parishes and families to take this gospel seriously okay. uh, more genuine attention is given to read to pray and to reflect and also in the witnessing manner okay. the sacramental life and also a life attached to the word of god is a beautiful blend of the catholic ethos the tradition which we are trying to to maintain and flourish among our families in our secular uh, culture where our children go and participate uh, the secular media teaches them a lot of things contrary to the catholic faith and shallow media has been attempting to educate our children to provide them with as much catholic resources and teaching as possible in today's day and age what would be your comments towards the attempts of shallow media especially at this juncture when shallow media is getting ready to uh, release uh, the first catholic charismatic english channel in this northern continent of america it is nothing but the spirit takes care of the ministry and shalom is doing a wonderful commendable service to the catholic church 
and Christian community and I must say people of goodwill mm-hmm. in India. And now coming to this continent, Shalom has started its work and the Lord has been helping Shalom to, 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 to come to take up more responsibilities. And I must say, this is a new responsibility given to Shalom mm-hmm. to have a media set apart for the English speaking Christians, Catholics and people of goodwill. Yes. And we don't limit it to the Catholics. Mm-hmm. We don't limit it to the Christians alone. We don't limit the gospel because the nature of the gospel is open for all. Go to the entire world and preach the gospel. This is what Jesus said. Yeah. So Shalom is trying to present a new approach to the preaching of the gospel, presenting the sacramental life of the church and presenting the one holy Catholic church presented in various realities, the theological diversities and even, I must say, sacramental realities mm-hmm. and even through ordinary way of living Christian life. I am really happy to hear that uh, Shalom is going to the further commitment in this country and I am sure God will be with the Shalom with you all who cooperate with this great ministry. And Shalom may continue to be a strong witnessing and a very vivid instrument in making our Christian life realistic, tangible and beautiful in this great country of freedom, diversity and choice. Languages are different. Language of faith is very important. I am very happy that I could talk to you through Shalom. May God be with you and strengthen you at all times, no matter how much pain, no matter how much weakness you have, no matter how much you are worried, He is the one, the Lord, He is the one who said, I have come that you may have life, life in abundance. God bless you all. If the attitude, your words and your vision has been a leading lamp for our journey of faith. Thank you so much for spending the time with us and giving us your valuable opinion. Thank you, Alex. God bless you.